I'm going to be joined by Varun Idnani, a young boy from Mumbai who followed his dreams, is in USA, um, runs a racing company, and he's going to tell you how he made it work, how he made it happen, how you can make your dreams come true. And if you want to let us see those amazing cars. There you are, Varun. Hey. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm Varun with Longhorn Racing. Uh, it, live it, Varun, from Austin, it Texas. Is, Absolutely fabulous to have you back here again. Um, I'm I'm excited. I'm really excited because I've been there to Longhorn, and you know I can that adrenaline just comes back when I see those cars. It's pretty amazing. Uh, your story is amazing, and we'll get to that in just a bit. But I can see a new addition there behind you. Yes, that is our new Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Amazing! Uh, is, it is our star child. It is the car we're most excited about. Uh, Lamborghini has never really um, had a big presence on racetracks and in racing. Yeah, and but this one has smashed the Nurburgring record, so, you know. Exactly. To, to yeah. get the lap record at the coolest, you know, most, <laughs> most advanced racetrack in the world is something to really brag about. Absolutely. Um, Mercedes AMG, uh, right there, they had the lap record okay. at the Nurburgring. Before we get to the rest, Varun, just... Yeah. Walk in there to that Lamborghini, just switch it on and rev it and just let us hear those 640 horses. Oh, uh, we would love to. Would love Great. To. So we're, we're going to get this pumping a little bit before we get into your story. I like it. All right. So well, here we are, the new Performante. Uh, let's, uh, let's get it rolling. We have this really cool fighter jet style start switch right here. Let's go. Yeah. Boom. Oh, yes. Nothing like the sound of a naturally aspirated engine. V10, 5.2 liters. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, we just love that sound. <laughs> we can't get enough of this, but. Uh, Varun, walk us around your garage, show us the rest of the cars you have, and then we're going to hear your story, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Let's uh, walk around the garage and uh, let's, uh, let's show us all our cars uh, one at a time. So here is my personal favorite, uh, the Porsche Cayman uh, GTS. Amazing. Let me, uh... Do you still have the GT3 that I drove? Yes, we do. We do have the GT3. Um, so this is our Cayman GTS. Um, okay. It is the lightest supercar in our fleet. Um, it's about 3,000 pounds, mid-engine. They put the engine in the right spot. Uh, yeah. 340 horse. Uh, it has a, a dual-clutch uh, paddle shift transmission. Let's, uh, let's take a look inside. Yeah. That is just amazing. Very, very cool cars. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. And, and what, which are the other cars you have in your current fleet? Okay. We have uh, the Performante that we just talked about. Yeah. We have the AMG GTR. Uh, okay. That's a pretty special version of the, of the AMG. It's, uh, it has the active aero and all the cool stuff for the track. Wow. And okay. then I think uh, Renuka's personal favorite. The, yes. The Lava Orange 991.2 GT3. Absolutely. You got that and right. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, this is a really cool car. They um, they finally put in uh, the biggest engine they make. The 4-liter engine is now in the GT3. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I think it's close to 500. Someone's more. asking, open the engine. Can I see it? Huh? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to hand the phone off to, to Kayla and let's, uh, let's fire it up. Can I tell you that car is just amazing around the track. I mean, I've, I've driven it at uh, Longhorn Racing and boy, oh boy, I just had bucket loads of fun in that car. Greetings from Gujarat. Uh, nice to have you here. Thanks guys for joining in. I mean, this is, um, the, I'm, no petrol head so things like this are a complete complete joy for me yes i'm gonna ask him to rev it right now okay we're losing you a bit but can we have the sound yeah all right well let's fire it up and here we go 
Do a walk around? Yeah, some revs, Barun, so we can hear it. Hey. Hey, lots of love from Dubai as well. Thank you for joining us. just never get enough of sounds like this and it just makes my Friday evening to be able to hear all these cars is definitely killing my lockdown blues I don't know about anybody else but I'm you know Varun you've just done us a massive favor we're all locked down at home here and this just makes us feel so much better all right my pleasure great okay so Varun let's Tell these guys, how do you get a garage like this? Let's talk about your story and how you, how you achieve this dream of yours. I mean, it's pretty, pretty incredible. Um, and then we'll, we'll give them another walk around tour of the whole garage once we have other people join in. Uh, so yeah. let's get talking about your story. Um, when when yeah. did this passion for cars really start? Uh, when did this passion And I see your dad's is... joined in, Dr. Idnani. Nice to have you here. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad he did because I think that's where it all started growing yeah. up. Um, uh, you know, my, uh, my dad was always, uh, he, he, he loves cars and he was always driving us around and, and uh, you know, doing, doing cool stuff in them. So I think yeah. from an early age, me and my brother and a lot of our friends got into it because of him. So, yeah. so I kind of, uh, he, he's the culprit behind my addiction. So. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, well, I guess that's what we share in common. My dad's the culprit behind my addiction. So there you go. I there guess it go. runs in the genes. It, it, this is kind of genetic. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely fun. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, your dad didn't get these cars for you. So you went off to the US to study. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what yes. did you actually study? I mean, it wasn't mechanical engineering. I know it had nothing to do with cars. So what did you actually study? Yeah, um, I, I moved to Austin to, to study biology and pre-med and my degree was in biotech. So okay. has, this has nothing to do with, with cars and, and the automotive world. So, so if you ever, my, my advice to you know, passionate entrepreneurs is if, if you have a passion and a drive for something, don't be afraid to kind of jump ship and change industries. Uh, yeah. cause, you know, it, uh, if you try hard enough, it usually works out. Absolutely. I, I think, yeah, your story really tells that. So, so you went to a university in Austin, that's right. And yes, then... I went to the University of Texas in Austin. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's kind of how I got into cars a little more. I was part of the university car club. Um, that's where I really learned to kind of get my hands dirty and, you know, uh, mess with race cars and build race cars. Yes. And, um, and, and really learn, uh, you know, the, the ins and outs of, uh, of racing a little bit. Yes. And uh, that's, that's kind of where I uh, really learned a lot about motorsports uh, specifically. So, so did you, did you try, you know, get behind the wheel and do stuff? And then how did this big idea happen? I mean, when did you get the idea that, okay, I'm going to have Longhorn Racing Academy? Yeah, great, great question. So uh, I graduated college and, you know, um, like uh, like any new graduate, we uh, we have to go out and do the responsible thing and get a job. And I worked in the biotech industry, uh, yeah. but I started Longhorn Racing on the side. It, it all started with one Mazda Miata and a dream. <laughs> okay. uh, so that's kind of where, where it all began. Uh, Harris Hill Raceway, which is our home track, uh, you know, was built and established. And, and we got on board with them as their partner to do all the driving instruction um, okay. and, and, uh, and car rentals. And, and, and back then we only had a Mazda Miata, which yeah. was uh, actually a great car to learn and to, to start. It is. I mean, it's a fun car to drive as I experienced as well. So yeah, exactly. I, I think you had a, a drifting experience in our Miata and <laughs> race car. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Which, which is always a lot of fun, but yeah, that's, that, that was LRA's launch kind of inaugural car and platform. Um, yeah. And, you know, we uh, starting out, I, you know, I, I, I will admit it, it was a little difficult. We, you know, we had to go out and, uh, you know, uh, seek commercial lending to to kind of start with our first asset and our first car. Um, you know, what did, you know, partners and bankers tell me back then? They thought I was crazy. Like, you're okay. going to do what? You're going to take a beginner and put mm -hmm. them in a race car on a racetrack? Are you nuts? That's never going to work. That's crazy. Yeah. And uh, I can confidently say that 10 years later, we 
are one of the few outfits that maintain an incident-free record. We've never had an incident uh, in 10 years of doing business. And, you know, it's a testament to our instruction and our safety protocols. And we've never picked up the phone and called the insurance company. So it's what we do is very, very safe. Uh, and in a second, uh, we're going to walk out and show you the racetrack. And when you see our track and all the runoff it has, and there are no walls, there's nothing to hit. Yeah. Uh, it's a really fun, confidence-inspiring uh, track for the beginner and the first timer. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's um, amazing. But what we also want to know is I want to go back a bit because there's so many of these young guys that ask us, uh, you know, how do I start my own business? How do I get money? How do I get finance? Will people listen to me? How do I chase my dream and my idea? So, uh, you know, when, when you were I mean, kind of nobody wanted to do this with you, the bankers didn't want to do it. So yeah. how did you push back? How did you get them to agree? How did you get them to invest? How did all of that happen? I mean, for a young, aspiring, you know, entrepreneur, what would you say? Well, I'll, I'll say one thing and I'll keep it very simple. Where there's a will, there's a way. You know, you have to, I know a lot of you guys out there are passionate about cars and automotive stuff, but yeah. the, the, the biggest takeaway is just believe in yourself. You know, if you believe in your model and if you're confident and if you, you know, you run a tight ship and you, you, you cover all your bases and, and find a way to make it work, Above and beyond, just kind of, you know, uh, you, you have to believe in what you're doing and, and in the model you're trying to push. And, and so, for us, that was how, how we uh, really, you know. Took so who did you finally manage to convince to give you the money to start up this business? Um, it, was, it was a local bank. They, uh, you know, we went out, we seek commercial lending and they, um, they, they, they financed our, our first car. Um, which our first supercar was an Audi R8, uh, rewinding okay. back to 2010, okay, uh, wow. 2011. That's, um, oh, I think it was 2012, maybe, when we added the, the first supercar. Uh, you know, we went out, it, it, you know, it, 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 it was a big leap of faith. I mean, it was, you know, a, a lot of money. We, you know, the, R, the Audi R8, the V8, it had just come out. It was a really cool looking car. You yeah. know, it had a huge following yeah. and, um, you know, we couldn't afford to go out and buy a Ferrari or Lamborghini back then. So the R8 is where we started. And, um, you know, we went out and we, we convinced a bank to lend us the money and the terms were not very favorable. So um, I do have a little bit of advice. Uh, if I had to go back and do this again or, you know, give all you, um, all you young lads out there uh, a bit of advice, it's, you know, it's follow your passion and and try and find someone who shares your passion, like an investor, you know, somebody who can sponsor you, somebody who has vested interest in, in what you do, but more, you know, above all, just somebody that gets it. Because yeah. if, if, you, if you can talk to an investor who gets it and who shares your passion, they're gonna, they're gonna be right there with you and they're gonna help you kind of, uh, you know, with your goals. Pursue that dream. Uh, so so yeah. do you advise, yeah, so, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a banker that kind of just gives you the money and charges you interest would you advise going with say uh you know someone who ha owns a piece of your company and then obviously they have a vested interest in making it work as well definitely right? definitely yeah um you know uh usually that's what an investor or a, a venture capitalist would want um you know they would want a piece of your company you give them a little bit of equity um and uh, you know they are vested in your interest so they they are betting on you that yeah. you're going to go out and deliver and uh, they're going to get a return on their money. But above all, the company is going to grow and become something really big and cool and it's going to help everyone. Okay. So after you started up and, and you know, you had this first car of yours, then how did you grow the business? And is it still a model that kind of makes money? And is it something that, you know, young kids can aspire to do? Yes, definitely. Um, so, um, you know, for, for us, uh, just kind of rewinding back in time, we, we grew the company organically. So, you know, we got one car, we got an R8, um, and we kind of rolled those profits into the next asset. And, you know, as we got a little more successful, uh, bankers and private investors, they believed in us a little more. The terms got more favorable. We put more money to the bottom line and we kind of scaled the company. And, you know, now we have the best of the best. We have the latest Lamborghini, the latest Ferrari, the latest Porsche. Um, so it, it, the growth was really exponential once we were able to deliver and really make these, you know, ha have these assets give us a return. Uh, so to answer your question, um, how 
um, you know, how would how would you go back and do this, or what advice do I have? Um, can it actually make money? Yes, you know, yes to yes to all of the above. Um, it's 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 very important to structure the debt, uh, you know, uh, the right way, um, okay. so you actually make money. You know, if, if you go out and and borrow a lot of money at unfavorable terms. Yeah, uh, your profits are kind of being diluted and dissipated, you know, all across uh, all your partners, and you don't actually make any money. For example, yeah. if you, know, you go out and get a Lamborghini Huracan, and your yeah. your monthly payment on the car is five thousand yeah. dollars, yeah, uh, you may not make a lot of money on it. But if you structure the debt correctly, and if you have favorable terms for your company, you can actually put more money yeah. to the bottom line and use that to leverage up against you know your next assets. Great, and and what what does LRE do now to sustain itself, and how is it a business model? How does it make money? Do you just have people that come in on track days, or how do you run this as a business? Yeah, yeah, great question. So, um, and it also goes back to you know, um, is 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 the model profitable? Are you guys actually making money? Yeah. Uh, so we use the assets for many different products. We have. The supercar driving experience, which is you know drive your dream car on a racetrack. We do yeah. it here at our home track, Harrisville Raceway. We do it at the Formula One racetrack down the street, Circuit of the Americas, and um, a couple other tracks around uh, in and around Texas. So LRE uh, actually also gets you to drive at Circuit of Americas, is what you're saying. It's not just your home track. Yes, correct. We we offer the product at at Coda as well, Circuit of the Americas. It's the home of the U.S. Grand Prix. It's a okay. Formula One track. It's here in Austin, and it's it's not far away. So we 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 take all our cars, we go down there, and uh, you know we do uh, we do track days at Coda as well. Uh, in fact, we have one coming up here in uh, just a few weeks. So you know, check out our website, and uh, we're gonna try and um, you know kind of broadcast that that event live uh, from from the Formula One track as well. Wow, that's amazing! It's amazing that you guys can be out and about and be driving around a track at this time. We're still locked down at home, so to give us some entertainment before we move on to the rest of this conversation, give us that walk around the garage because there's lots of people asking for it. A lot yeah. of people want to see the rest of the cars as well, so give us that walk around, Varun. Definitely, definitely. All right, well here, uh, here we go. Um, you know, since since we are in Texas, let's uh, let's go ahead and start with a pickup truck. You know, everyone in Texas needs needs one of these uh, trucks. So we have the Ford Raptor. That's kind of our uh, utility vehicle. Um, we have the Porsche Cayman, which uh, which is my personal favorite. Three thousand pounds, mid engine, really agile car. Great car to start out. Um, Renuka's favorite. This is uh, a 911 GT3. It's the yeah, 991, yeah. so it's uh, it's the latest uh, latest generation. Here is our star child. It is uh, the Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Uh, what makes this car really cool and sets it apart from the rest of the the Huracan fleet is it's kind of a, a thoroughbred for the racetrack. It's uh, it has the active aero. You know, it brags with the Nurburgring lap record. Five point two liters V ten. It revs to nine thousand. It's just a screamer, and it, it's awesome. Yeah. And then moving down, we have the AMG GTR. Again, a really special version. Um, Amazing. Of the AMG. There's that really cool wing on the back, and and the active aero, and uh, you know, an, an, another record holder at the famous Nurburgring. So really, really cool track car, and. Then we have the 991.2 GT3. That's the latest generation of the GT3. It's a, it's a really awesome, amazing track machine. It's, uh, it has the four liter engine. It has that bigger wing on the back. Another Yummy. screamer, revs to 9,000. <laughs> Just really fun, awesome track car. And see if we can do a little bit of a walk around. Uh, on yeah. The Someone's asking EV. Would you ever get an EV there, Varun, in your in your fleet? Would we ever get an EV? Um, you know, I, I I think we would. And quite honestly, uh, there's a lot of mixed opinions about that. You know, oh, electric cars are not very exciting. Yeah. But you know, it's uh, they they are actually quick on track. You know, you have that instant torque. I yeah. think Tesla has uh, a new model of the Tesla Roadster that's yeah. about to come out. 
So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think we would get one. And The uh, Mustang EV, someone's asking. Would you get the Mustang EV? The Mustang EV. Well, you know, the uh, Ford has a big following with the Mustang. So, uh, so you know, uh, it, it could be fun to try one out. Why not? And, and do you come down and drive Someone's up. asking, did they see a Supra somewhere there in your garage? I didn't notice it, but is there uh, one in your garage? No, there's not a Supra here. There's um, it's kind of a classic car. It's uh, it's it's a Nissan um, 280Z or uh, Datsun back in the day. So that's uh, it's kind of a classic. It's uh, it's a proper race car. So it has a cage, and um, you know it's uh, it used to be uh, yeah used to be used for a little bit of racing. But yeah, that's uh, definitely a, a classic. And uh, you know, would you get the car. Porsche taken? Someone's asking. Would you get the Porsche taken? Oh, we would love to get the Porsche Taycan. It's um, the Taycan Turbo S. It's a pretty hard car to get right now. They they have a wait list and uh, the production is kind of halted uh, in Germany. But but yes, that's a really cool car. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we'd like to get one at some point. That is amazing. Varun, you want to take us out and show us your track? Yes, definitely. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's walk out. And- Let's walk out and let's take a look at the track. I have to tell you, this is a really fun track. I've driven there. They have some crazy corners. There's one that kind of leads you up a hill and then blind down it. And it is quite a turn in. Um, uh, Almost went off there and scared the shit out of the instructor. So, a lot of fun at uh, LRA. I think we're losing you, Varun, outside. So uh, there's a view of the track. It is a really nice racetrack out there. Okay, well, here we are. It's a gorgeous day in Texas and the sun is shining and uh, track conditions are good. I'm not sure uh, if you guys can see this, but I'm going to slowly pan across uh, the track. There's one of the corners. It's a 1.8 mile, 11 turn. Uh, racetrack and that hill right there that is uh, yeah. a really fun elevation drop uh, it's turn four and um, Renuka can tell you how much fun she had drifting down that hill in our uh, MX5 race car <laughs> absolutely absolutely I just had some great fun over there and uh, I mean uh, you know there was a little Mazda Miata and I had a great time in that as well so, just some crazy corners on this track. It's also, you know, got some really nice fast rundowns. So yeah, it's it's amazing. And that is Longhorn Racing Academy. So that's that's uh, Varun's love of his life, I think. Uh, lives yes. half his life out there. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, there's some yeah. So uh, I think people are going completely crazy. Everybody can imagine driving okay, themselves on that track. Someone awesome. saying, "I want to drive an M5 on that track." Um, people are really happy that we shared that view. So great, Marun. But we, I think we need to get you back inside. Uh, and people yes. want to hear that performance sound once again. So maybe you can give us that kick just once again before we get to chatting with you. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with you. A Ferrari Pista would be really fun. There, uh, my life cars. That's that's really great. Um, uh, yes, that blue performante, and I cannot wait for the day that I can go back to Austin and drive that car track. Yes, we are. Go back inside. Yes, absolutely. We lost you for a bit there, Varun, but we're glad to have you back. And um, yeah, let's fire up that Lamborghini again. I think Varun's uh, Wi-Fi is shifting um, from inside to outside and let's see if we can get him back. Okay, there it is. Varun, we're kind of losing you on the internet here. Okay, hang on, let me fix that. Yeah. 
Okay, we have you back, I think. Okay. Okay, so someone, nice order. Okay, someone actually wants you to get in and rev that pickup truck. <laughs> You know, we're not even getting that feeling. But I can tell you when you're actually in that garage of Varun's, it echoes and you know, you kind of get goosebumps when he does that. It is pretty amazing. Someone wants to know, do you rev that Ford pickup truck of yours? I have to say it's a very comfortable pickup truck. Uh, Varun's pickup truck is like uber, uber comfy and spacious. Well, yeah, it has the off-road Baja suspension and you can jump it and do all, all kinds of fun stuff and take it off-road. And yes, definitely rev it. It's got that EcoBoost engine in there and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, Varun, no Ferraris. Someone's asking us no Ferraris. Oh, we do have a Ferrari. It's the 488 and uh, it's at a different track today. So unfortunately, we don't, uh, we don't have it in the shop. But yes, we do have a Ferrari. We, we, we love the Ferraris. They're, you know, Italian thoroughbreds. They're... It's a proper exotic and uh, a little bit of inside information. Uh, don't tell anyone I said this, but we're probably going to get the new F8 Tributo here. Oh, in the fall. amazing. Uh, so so that's, <laughs> that's going to replace the 488 GTB that we uh, currently have. Someone wants to know what's under the red cover there. What's under the red cover? Um, you want to pull that cover off? Yeah, we can, um, we can show that car off a little bit. It, um, uh, we're not running it in our fleet anymore, but it's the Corvette Z06. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's America's supercar. It's, 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 a, it's a proper supercar. Um, and, um, you know, they, uh, they've really done a good job with uh, the C7 and now even the C8, which is, um, which is the new mid-engine Corvette. But the Corvettes, you know, they're, they're really, really good, you know, kind of V8 naturally aspirated um, <sighs> Give me naturally yeah. aspirated any day. There it is. It's a it's a really good looking, high performance red. Very very nice. Amazing. And that there in the background, I can see is Kayla. Can we say hey Kayla? There we are. Yeah. Kayla, say hey to the camera. She's so I have to tell you event. that Kayla there, right right there back there, is like a one woman whirlwind. She kind of organizes the events at this track. She does all the filming. Uh, she can get a whole video made. Um, I did, if you see my story online, after Longhorn Racing Academy, the entire thing has been filmed by this one woman wonder over there. So uh, there that's Kayla. Thank you. <laughs> and here we are. Looks like Kayla's jacket matches the red Corvette. So we have everyone in, in high performance red today. Absolutely, Very absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, someone's asking for, she's handling everything. Guy, Kayla is Ferrari. pretty amazing. That's our, that's our 488 GTB right there at our track. That's also a great picture. And Varun, uh, you know, that, that's a picture out there that talks about it. There, there are lots of instructors there. Um, you know, those instructors are amazing. I've done a session at Varun's track with the instructors. They, nobody holds you back on that track. They're egging you on to go faster. They're pushing you and they're pushing you and they keep making you go faster and faster around that track. So it's a hell of a time that you can have at Longhorn Racing Academy. If any one of you make it to Texas, uh, I definitely recommend you go there. But apart from track days, Varun, what else do you guys do at um, um, LRA? Yeah, great question. So, um, you know, and that goes back to what you asked earlier. How do you, you know, is this really profitable? How do you, you know, how do you keep the cars busy? So, yeah, you know, we, yeah. we do more than racetrack stuff. We do, we do something called a, a hill country driving adventure, which is, okay. you know, you, you go out on the back roads. We have some beautiful hill country here in Texas, uh, some really nice windy roads uh, that kind of go out west. So, uh, you know, we, we convoy all the supercars and we, we, drive, in, uh, we drive in a convoy and uh, it's about a four-hour experience. So you actually get a lot of supercar seat time. We take out the Ferrari, we take out the Lamborghini, we take out the Porsches, um, and you spend about an hour in each supercar. So over the four-hour half day, 
you've got to experience an hour in the Ferrari, one hour in the Lambo and the Porsches and so on. Uh, and, you know, the roads out, out, out west are really windy and a lot of fun. You usually never yeah. find anybody out there. Um, so it's a really cool way to spend half a day and drive our entire fleet. So That's we great. Do, we do those on weekends as well. Someone asked us, what's the typical cost of a training session that you have? How many laps do you get? Uh, you know, what are the different kind of training sessions that you have? Yeah, uh, good question. So we, um, the supercar driving experience starts at $300 and that gets you in the Cayman GTS or the M BMW M2 competition. Um, it gets you three laps at our track or two laps at Circuit of the Americas. Uh, each lap, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a good size. It's a 1.8 mile lap here at our home track. And the Coda, the Formula One track, is a 3.4 mile uh, lap. We run the full Grand Prix circuit. So for, for 500 bucks, you could drive the Lamborghini, you could drive the Mercedes AMG, uh, the Porsche GT3, or the Ferrari 488. Uh, it's all inclusive. Uh, you know, we, we don't upcharge for insurance. There are no extras. The $500 is a turnkey, arrive and drive, fully insured with a classroom session, uh, in-car instructor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It, it covers everything from A to Z. Um, and, you know, you, uh, like Renuka said, we really let you get after it. We, our instructors aren't there to hold you back. They're always telling you, go faster, and we really want to help you get to the limit of these amazing supercars. So you really leave, uh, you know, a, a better driver on track and you learn a lot about uh, the race craft. Someone asked an interesting question. What was the journey like from that first R8 to all these cars in your garage? And what was the feeling of that first R8 when you actually got it and you put it here and you started off? Oh, that's a great question. A very loaded question and uh, one that actually spans over uh, half a decade. Um, it was a really exciting, almost breathtaking journey in a way. You know, going from a, a sports car to a supercar, right? Going from uh, that Miata to uh, an Audi R8 was, 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 was really cool because, you know, we just took a 150 horsepower car and and you know tripled tri tripled those numbers and yeah. and went to a proper supercar and it it, it was just awesome because uh, you you really then we got to you know feel firsthand you know what these cars were built to do in their natural habitat you know the, everybody drives a supercar on the street and yeah. you can only do so much but to, to get it out there on a racetrack where there are no speed limits and to you know hit that red line in second third fourth gear. And, and really have, you know, an instructor by your side help you feel the cornering G's and, 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 and find that limit in a turn uh, was, was, was really cool and amazing. And we, we, we all never got to experience that in a supercar. So to get in that R8 and really learn what that race craft is all about and then, you know, go on to um, a Ferrari 430, a Lamborghini Gallardo, those were the first exotic supercars that uh, that LRA got, uh, you know, back in the day. And uh, the journey was exciting because every car is unique and amazing in its own way. And, you know, you don't really know that until you actually feel it. So to get in those uh, Italian thoroughbreds, to actually get in a Ferrari and learn the dynamics and then get in the Lamborghini and, and see how it's different and unique but amazing in its own way, and, and then to get in a Porsche and, and feel what a, a proper race car feels like was, was really an exhilarating experience. And, you know, I'm very thankful uh, to, to be a part of that journey. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Someone's asking, what's your favorite car around the track? What's the fastest car around your track? Um, and what would you recommend for a beginner? Oh, these questions are just pouring in. So I'm just taking them as I can see them. Good. Yeah, no, awesome, awesome questions. Well, I'll tell you that me and Renuka, we both uh, are, are similar in, in, uh, in the cars we love. She loves that lava orange GT3 there. So she's a Porsche gal. Yeah. And I want to say that I love, love, love this Cayman GTS. Uh, so that's my personal um, favorite car in the fleet. It's, it's the Porsche. And and, you know, a, a lot of people on track uh, love the Porsches uh, and, and it's because they, they really drive and handle like, you know, like, like a proper race car. It's, uh, they're really nimble. They're very agile. 
you don't need 600 horsepower to have fun on a racetrack, you know? And, and in fact, if it's your first time, it's going to be the opposite. You know, if you have a high horsepower car, you're going to learn less. But yeah. When you get in those Porsches, you're actually faster around the track and you really learn the racecraft uh, in, 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 a, in a really cool, special way. So my favorite car is, um, is this Porsche Cayman. And uh, it's actually the oldest car in our fleet. It's, uh, it's about four years old. And wow. we, wow. Are, um, we are replacing it with the new 2021 Cayman GTS 4.0. So they're, oh, taking, they're taking the four liter engine yeah. and they're putting it in the Cayman. Yeah. And uh, I think you guys have that car in, in Europe and Asia right now. The, the North American market gets it uh, this fall. Uh, so I'm, I'm most excited about that car. A four liter Cayman, the engine in the right spot, a mid engine car. Um, and to have, you know, that much more power, it, it's really going to be amazing. So, so that's Well, you can about. see he's a complete petrol head. I mean, he just, when he talks of that, that smile just comes on to Varun's face as well. Uh, Varun, people are asking, would you ever consider opening something like this in India? And do you think it would work? Um, I would love to. Um, and um, I've, um, I've not... Um, I've not explored it, to be quite honest. So if, uh, if there's a partner out there in India that, that wants to do it, uh, you know, hit, hit me up. <laughs> uh, yes. do, I, do I think it would work? Absolutely. You guys have an awesome circuit in both. You, you'll have a Formula One track yeah. that is not being used anymore. You'll, ha you'll, you'll have the infrastructure. Um, Renuka tells me about the awesome tracks in, in South India. Um, I wish somebody actually went and, and built one around Mumbai. I think there's a huge market for that. Um, but, you know, if, uh, if, if you guys uh, provide the racetrack and the infrastructure, I, I would love to come in as a partner and provide the cars um, and, and offer this product in India. But, you know, it, it is, um, you, you do find outfits like Longhorn Racing all around the world. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a really cool, uh, fun, fun business. So um, I hope, I really hope that uh, we, can, uh, we can find one in India soon. Someone saying you forgot to mention which is the fastest car around your track? Which is the car oh, that sets your track car. record at the moment? That is a good question. That is a good question. I want to say it's going to be a very close battle between the Huracan Performante and the new 911 GT3. Uh, they are both, they are both, you know, they both had the lap record at the Nürburgring, right? And yeah. uh, they're both nimble. They're both very agile. Uh, the Porsche is uh, a little over 3,000 pounds, and so is the Lamborghini. So, you know, they're both about the same weight. The Porsche has, uh, you know, better handling in the corners. The Performante is just a monster uh, in the corners <laughs> and on the straightaways. It, yeah. It's that V10 that, uh, you know, revs to uh, 9,000 yeah. RPM. So yeah. a lot of power and that wing in the back, that actually does a lot. It really helps uh, with the cornering speeds and the active arrow. So um, we do need to have a battle. And, may and maybe, we'll, uh, maybe we'll put that on uh, Instagram Live uh, on our next track day. We'll I have some professional right. drivers go head to head and, yeah. and race the Huracan Performante against the 911 GT3. So uh, I will report back and let you know which one is faster. <laughs> I think I think that would be a great idea. Someone saying, would you ever consider Dodge? I have no idea why, but I wouldn't want to drive one around the track at the moment. <laughs> so um, they do actually make a really cool product. Um, you know, the Hellcat, uh, especially in the South, yeah. um, is, uh, is, is, is kind of this, you know, again, the American V8 muscle car, lots of power. Unfortunately, uh, they don't do very well um, in corners. So that's not a really good track car. Uh, we actually had a client bring one out and he pretty much drifted around the whole track. Not the <laughs> fastest way to get around, but definitely yeah. the most fun. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, we actually wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't add a Hellcat or um, a Shelby Mustang or, and, you know, we just retired the Corvette. Um, we, um, we kind of specialize in, uh, in imports and, and German cars, mostly German and Italian cars. That's sort of our, our niche. But, but yeah, to answer your question, the Dodge uh, Challenger Hellcat and the Charger Hellcat are very exciting cars. Varun, before you continue, your niece has requested, I think that's your niece online there, saying, 
please shout out to me laila saying please say hi to me cuz i'm sitting here and watching all right well you know hey there laila you know she's uh, she's a little kiddo but i'm really glad that she's uh, taking an interest in cars um i'm not sure if her mom would approve uh, of her driving one when it's uh, when she's of age yeah. but uh, shout out to laila she's my niece in dubai and uh, we miss you and i hope you come back to texas and i can get you in uh the lamborghini and take you for a little spin around the parking lot <laughs> great um varun someone's asked an interesting question from when you had the big idea to uh when you when you actually started the build a uh, business how long was that journey and you know how long did it take you to actually get the ball rolling hmm good question um i if i re it, it's been about it's been a decade but if i recall correctly it was pretty quick you know if uh if you have an idea and if you have a plan a good plan and if you know how to implement and all that's holding you back is the money uh you just got to find the money and do it so i think with longhorn racing it was it all happened in in a very quick you know 3 to 6 month from start to finish process uh we found the race track we got a partnership with them we went out we talked to a bank we financed our first car and you know um i was pretty blessed to be surrounded by all these amazing racers and members of our race track that came out and uh, did our instructing so it all happened very quickly i want to say in under 3 months varun it's all sounding really rosy now but i think uh, you must have had a lot of challenges a lot of sleepless nights worrying about you know if something goes wrong things happen um sometimes the money you know is it going to work there's some bad days so what 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 are the struggles with Well, you know, um I've heard this from a lot of successful businessmen and and people who've uh, kind of made it in in different fields. Um my one piece of advice is don't be afraid of failure. You know, yeah. all a lot of the great businessmen out there have only succeeded because they failed at some point. So, you know, believe in yourself, you know, um I'm not saying be impulsive, but but you know, uh be passionate and really you know work hard towards what you believe in and you'll find a way to make it happen so so yeah definitely you know in in the beginning when i had you know all these people with advice kind of talking in my ears and saying are you crazy you know you're you're taking a beginner and you're putting them in a 600 horsepower yeah. exotic super car on a on a formula 1 race track you know where the wall is 6 feet from you that's insane but if you have a plan and if you have a good one and if you know how to run a tight ship and and how to run things safely you'll be fine so so yes it was a little stressful at different points and you know we weren't sure where the needle kind of laid with with the risk versus reward but you know we believed in ourselves and we believed in what we were doing and uh you know it 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 worked out so you know don't don't be afraid to uh to roll the dice and bet on yourself because you know most most times it works out yeah um uh another person's asking us varun um of all the things you could have done with cars why the racing academy what pushed you in this direction um well you know i i love cars and i wanted the best of the best and i wanted to run a business that that had you know one of each you know the the best lamborghini <laughs> the best ferrari you I know think that's just I, such I, a simple I wanted, answer i wanted the dream garage and um we had to find a way to you know let other people also enjoy these cars and make a business out of it um and you know not lose a shit ton of money <laughs> so the supercar driving experience was um a pretty easy um obvious choice to start you know hey let's get a let's get a garage filled with exotics and you know let's um let's not charge a lot of money we don't want to break the bank uh, and let's give people an opportunity to drive these really cool cars on a race track um and offer the experience and and that's what kind of you know pays for a lot of them and um my my other question a lot of people are right. asking is like what kind of turnover can you expect from a business like this um you know is it enough for sustenance or do you have to look to other avenues and do stuff uh, how does that work um yeah good question so um again you know it's it's all about your business plan and how you how you structure it but my advice is make sure your debt is structured correctly 
make sure you get favorable terms on uh, on any kind of finance that you get. Um, out of everything that we've been through, if I could go back in time and do it again, I would talk to a venture capitalist or a private investor because your regular bank down the street, you know, they don't, they, they cannot take the risk um, that uh, that you may want to or a private investor may want to. So, so how do you make it profitable? Structure your debt correctly and, um, you know, make sure that you have uh, enough, uh, enough uh, income going to the bottom line where your business is profitable because you don't want to just kind of pay for your cars and pay your overheads and not be able to scale and take the next step. So Did you have that, a mentor, was, Varun? Did, did you have a mentor, mentor or someone who kind of uh, directed you along the way? I did. I did, yes. Um, you know, it was uh, a lot of the um, members here at our racetrack and, and successful businessmen, you know, not necessarily in the car world, but that were passionate about what we did as well. And they really wanted to uh, kind of help us succeed and, uh, and, and build this product and be a part of it. Because, uh, you know, who doesn't want to be around a cool garage filled with a dozen exotics and have access to them on a racetrack. So uh, Every day of yes. your life. I mean, yes. this is, you know, a lot of people, you know, when I meet Varun, the first thing I tell him is that everybody tells me I have a dream job. But when I see his, I'm like completely envious to have those cars, to be able to drive them on a track every day and, you know, no limitations. Uh, that's kind of, I think, everyone's dream uh, that you've achieved, Varun. Uh, before we kick off for tonight, I know I've kept you really, really long. And thanks for answering all these questions really patiently. No problem, but um, what I'd really like, what I think a lot of people, two questions, because one guy's been consistently asking, Bugatti, 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 would you like a Bugatti? Is it your favorite car? Um, so that's one question I want you to answer. And, and let's kick off the last question with, what's the next dream car uh, you know that you're dreaming about owning in this in this Ooh, garage okay car? good good question well for the bugatti guy out there they're amazing cars they're awesome there's there's very few cars that could actually outrun them in a straight line uh, the reason we wouldn't get one is they are you know tremendously heavy with i don't know 1000 2000 horsepower that they have the bugattis actually don't do very well going around the racetrack and that's because they're heavy so they're really fast, straight line. They're awesome drag cars. Uh, you know, definitely a, a really cool car you can take out on the highway and just, you know, go full tilt. Uh, not the ideal track car. So that's the reason we wouldn't get one. But they're really cool. They're really amazing. And, you know, I'd love to drive one. The car, you know, I'm dreaming about a lot uh, lately is, uh, is the new Ferrari F8. Mm -hmm. I had the advantage of... Uh, the pleasure of driving it at the Formula One racetrack when Ferrari had a demo day a few months ago. You know, we every kid has dreamt of that shiny red Ferrari, right? Growing up, yeah. The Ferraris are the best of the best. They're Italian yeah. thoroughbreds. Yeah. There's nothing out there like a Ferrari, and and every time they come out with a new one, you know, yeah. everybody in the car world is like, wow, that is, yeah. you know, that is just the next most yeah. amazing thing out there. Yeah. So you know. We, we hope we can get one this fall and replace our 488. But yeah. that's the car I'm most excited about in 2020. <laughs> Amazing. Great, Varun. Thanks so much for joining us. And thanks for giving all these youngsters a peek into your life and how you did it and, and you know, telling them how you lived your dream. It's been really fantastic having you here. Maybe one last walk around that garage for all the yes. guys that are still watching and want to see all these really really uh, great cars uh, you know it's it's been a great friday evening this has kind of brightened it up for us one last pan right there and it's my pleasure guys thank you for all tuning in uh you know a big hello from everybody on the longhorn racing academy team pan up pan through our garage one last time the huracan the cayman and there's our director of events kayla giving a little presidential wave standing right by that Ford Raptor. She's a, she's a very Southern girl, so she, she loves to pick up trucks as well. <laughs> there Great. we have um, the Raptor and the GT3. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, give our uh, Instagram uh, page a like or a follow, and uh, hopefully more of these to come. Thank you to Renuka and Autocar India. It's been, a, it's, been, it's been an absolute pleasure being a part of this. And Renuka, we hope you can come back to Austin and we do need to get you driving uh, around Circuit of the Americas. 
which is the Formula One racetrack. And That's the next one, Varun. Right when I can get myself out of this lockdown in there, I'm I'm coming straight to that track to have some fun for sure. So, sounds great. Thank you guys again. Have a great evening and a wonderful weekend, and uh, and take care.